Summit Hydraulics Kubota, Third Function Valve Kit, Installation Video The third function kit is designed to work with the following Kubota models. The tractor shown in this video might not match your exact model. The following parts are included with your assembly. For any replacement parts, or hardware, please refer to contact at summit-hydraulics.com. For all included parts, and hardware, please refer to the instructional manual. The following tools are recommended for this installation. We recommend using a torque wrench when tightening, instead of an impact wrench. Please torque to the specifications shown in the instructions. Initial Preparations Before you begin the installation, please make sure to read the instructional manual thoroughly, as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. The following safety steps need to be followed prior to installation of this valve kit. First, park the tractor on a flat surface. Place gear shift lever in park. Turn off engine and remove ignition key. Second, place chocks in front and behind tractor's left rear wheel. After the tractor is secured, locate the hardware and lubricate all threads and O-rings with hydraulic fluid. We recommend that all Summit Hydraulics products be installed by an experienced professional. Step 1. Initial Assembly Begin by locating the valve assembly. There is a cardboard plate on the bottom of the valve assembly, held in place by four plastic inserts. Remove the inserts, and discard the cardboard plate. After removing the cardboard plate, insert the four Allen screws through the top holes, as shown. Locate, and attach the manifold. Ensure the P on the valve is aligned with the pinhole on the manifold, and push the valves into place. Make sure the screws match the manifold holes, and fully tighten the screws using a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. Pork the screws to 2 foot pounds. Next, install a JIC male adapter, and a SAE slash ORB male adapter, into both P and T ports on the valve assembly. Tighten the adapters using an open end wrench. On the opposite side, Install two SAE male adapters, into both A and B ports. Tighten the adapters using an open-end wrench. Take care not to over-tighten. After the adapters are secured, attach two, male quick couplers to the SAE male adapters installed in the previous step. Next, locate the quick coupler mounting bracket. Install two JIC bulkhead adapters to the quick coupler mounting bracket. The adapters go facing out on the short side of the brackets with the nuts on the outside, as shown. Tighten the adapters using an open end wrench. After the adapters are secured, install two SAE slash ORB O-rings to the short threaded side of the bulkhead adapters. Finally, attach one male and one female coupler to the JIC bulkhead adapters. Tighten the adapters using an open-end wrench and take care not to over-tighten. Step 1 is now complete. Step 2, Valve Installation. Begin by removing the platform carriage bolt located on the right-hand side of tractor. Next, attach the valve mounting bracket to the existing hole on the machine using a socket head screw and a flange nut. The bolt goes through the bottom, and should face upward. Tighten the bolt using a torque wrench, while using an open-end wrench to secure the nut. Torque the bolt to 20 foot-pounds. After the bracket is secured, attach the valve assembly to valve mounting bracket using two socket head cap screws. Place the valve assembly on the inside of the bracket, with the male quick couplers facing upward, as shown. Fully tighten the screws using an Allen wrench. Pork the screws to 12 foot-pounds. After the valve assembly is secured, step 2 is now complete. Step 3, Pressure and Return Line Installation. Please note, if you have not already, place chocks in front and behind the tractor's left rear wheel. Follow the factory procedures to remove the right, rear wheel of your tractor. Once the tractor is safely lifted, remove the lug nuts and the right rear wheel. Follow the factory procedures to remove the inner fender to expose all of the hydraulic lines. Next, locate the power beyond port on the selective control valve SCV, or manifold block. 
a hose will be connected from the power beyond port on the SCV, and routed to the return to tank port. Locate the proper return to the tank port. Once the line is located, please remove this line. You might want to place a panel, or rag, underneath in case some fluid spill. Next, attach the 90 elbow adapter to the power beyond port on the SCV. Connect one end of the female hydraulic pressure hose to the 90 elbow, and connect the other JIC female hose end, to the P port, on the valve body. Connect the short hose, as shown. Make sure to attach the 90 degree elbow adapter to the hose before routing it. Fully attach the hose ends using an open end wrench, and take care not to over tighten. Next, connect one end of the female hydraulic return tank hose, the longer hose, to the tank port. Connect the other female hose end, to the T port on the valve body. Fully attach the hose ends using an open end wrench, and take care not to over tighten. Finally, using the provided zip ties, secure the pressure and tank lines to minimize movement during tractor operation. Add zip ties as required. Double check, and make sure the hydraulic lines are tightly secured. Once the lines are fully attached, you may reattach the right wheel. Tighten the right wheel in place as needed. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4, Cross Beam Coupler Mount. Begin by locating the right loader arm cross beam. Orientation is based from a sitting position. Next, attach the quick coupler mounting bracket to the right side of the loader arm cross beam. Utilize the U-bolt to tighten the quick coupler mounting bracket to the loader arm cross beam using the two U-bolt nuts. First, place the bracket on the cross beam, with the longer side facing forward, as shown. Place the U-bolt around the cross beam arm and hand tighten both U-bolt nuts. Then, slide the U-bolt through the bracket and secure it using the provided nuts. Fully tighten all nuts using an open end wrench. Next, route the A and B work line hoses along the loader arm and through the loader loop bracket to the quick coupler mounting bracket. The hoses should follow the loader arm path and stay as close as possible. Attach the couplers and adapters to the hoses before attaching them. Connect the 90 degree adapters on the A and B work line hoses to the right side that connects to the bulkhead fittings on the quick coupler mounting bracket on the loader arm cross beam. Fully tighten the adapters using an open end wrench and take care not to over tighten. On the opposite end, connect two 45 degree adapters to the A and B work line hoses. Connect two quick couplers to the 45 degree adapters. Fully tighten the adapters using an open end wrench and take care not to over tighten. After preparing the hoses, route them as needed along the loader arm and through the loader loop bracket. Connect the female couplers on the hoses to the male couplers on the valve manifold. Pull back on the couplers and slide them into place. Connect the 90 degree adapters on the A and B work line hoses to the bulkhead fittings on the quick coupler mounting bracket. Fully tighten the adapters using an open end wrench and take care not to over tighten. Finally, if the hoses are too big or loose, secure the work lines to the loader arm using the provided zip ties. Secure as required. Step 4 is now complete. Step 5, Joystick Switch Installation. Begin by removing the existing knob from end of the control lever. Rotate and remove the knob. Next, attach the joystick handle switch. Using the provided Allen wrench, loosen the four tightening bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. The joystick bottom has an adjustable bushing, and can be adjusted as needed to obtain a rough fit. Slide the bushing over the control lever, and tighten the bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. Orient the handle as needed that works best for you, and then fully tighten. Run the wire alongside the control lever, and feed the wire through the boot. Slide the boot off, and feed all wiring through the boot. Slide the wiring down through the loader valve cover. Take care not to pinch or cut the cables. Properly route the wiring and use zip ties to secure the routing in place. Next, connect the plastic Deutsch connectors on the wiring harness to the valve body. There are ports on the valve body. Secure and clip the connectors in place. After all wiring is in place, you will need access to the battery. Remove the front cover as needed. Connect the harness Deutsch connector to the switch Deutsch connector. The connectors should easily fit and clip into place. Finally, connect the power and ground cables to the battery. Connect the black ground terminal end to the battery's negative post, and connect the red positive terminal end to the battery's positive post. Tighten as needed. Congratulations! Installation of the Kubota, third function kit, is now complete. You may now proceed and do an operation check. Upon completion of installation, ensure all connections are tight and secure. 
Connect the hydraulic implement hoses to the quick couplers, on the cross beam coupler mount. Operate the hydraulics using two button joystick. After hoses and cylinders are full of hydraulic fluid, check the hydraulic fluid levels of your machine. If low, add hydraulic fluid. Do not use your new valve kit, until it has been fully assembled, and inspected for correct performance, in accordance with the instructional manual. Enjoy your new, Kubota, third function kit. Brought to you by, Summit Hydraulics.